so much, Scott and David Bavay. We appreciate your musical talents. I want to say uh, happy 4th of July to each and every one. We hope you've, you've had a wonderful weekend celebrating our nation's anniversary. We hope that you all have been safe and that you've been able to just find new ways to celebrate this great holiday occasion. We want to wish the very best for to each and every one of you. I can remember a time as a young pastor coming into the church late at night and our youth group of the church had gathered. They had gathered in what was called a lock-in. Now, I don't know who thought it was a brilliant idea to have about 30 teenagers uh, with all kinds of, you know, young, vibrant energy uh, locked into the church and thinking that that was a wise thing to do for them to spend the night in a lock-in. Kids running crazy, running everywhere. And when I came into the church, all of a sudden, there were kids screaming and hollering, food fights going on. There was uh, hide-and-go-seek taking place. It was all kinds of pandemonium. It seemed like everything was cre just chaotic. And I began to ask, hey, who's in control here? Who's in control? Do you ever feel like that, that sometimes your life is just this kind of chaotic adventure? and that the world of confusion is all around you and everything seems to be spiraling out of control and you wanna just simply say the same thing, hey, who's in control here? Who's in control? So let me just invite you to this wonderful journey of understanding who's in control. Let's start with what's really in control of our lives. Some would say, well, it's circumstances that are in control. Certainly, circumstances must be controlling our lives, you know. Uh, a bad weather controls our lives. We must think, oh, certainly, you know, occasion that maybe I don't feel well controls our life. Maybe the circumstances is, uh, you know, uh, we lost our job or something difficult is challenging in our life. Certainly, that must control our life. But what are circumstances? Circumstances, circumstances are uh, effect. And everything we see around us and experience is an effect of something. But an effect always follows a cause. So we have to think, wait a minute. Effects do not make themselves. You know, bad weather and all these kind of things, everything's going, losing our job, all these crazy things that we may talk about within our life, they don't make themselves just suddenly appear. They're created. The things we see in our world, in our life, and in ourselves are a result of something, some condition. There is an origin. There is a relationship between actions and results, a relationship between cause and effect. The effects or results, well, what happens is they're held in place by mind or by cause. Okay, so wait a minute, let's break this down. What's cause? Let's understand that a little bit more. Uh, let me invite you to this thought that you are the cause. We are the cause and nothing moves except our mind moves it. Our thoughts move it. Our thoughts are so creative. Well, as an example, your hand moves because your mind moved it. Your feet move because your mind moved it. You moved, you acted, you spoke, you touched, you loved, you did all these things because your mind did it. Because your mind moved you to do so. So we are the cause and nothing moves except our mind moves it. The Bible talks about this and as a man thinks, as a woman thinks, so are they. It speaks of this creative mind moving and causing and bringing about effects. So we realize that what we think and how we respond to life scenarios and circumstances is creating the effect. We then become the cause that brings about the effect. What about uh, some sort of change in your life that you may have experienced? Did you look back and say, is there some sort of cause that brought about a different effect? I can remember years ago, really feeling a sense of victimhood for who I was. Feeling living out that victimhood, quite often maybe even engaging some good old pity parties and feeling sorry for myself. Living in that victimhood, I began to think from that victimhood perspective. And then I thought, you know, wait a minute, am I the victim or could I be a victor? 
And as I began to change my thinking, I began to create a different outcome. What happened within my life is I changed everything. The cause began to fold and unfold in a new way, take on a new shape. I began to think differently, so I created a different result. I no longer celebrated being the victim. I began to celebrate being the victor. Big change, big shift as I allowed this cause to bring about a different effect. So who's in control? Hey, who's in control? It's you. And it's your thoughts that are shaping your direction. It's you and your mind. Okay, so what is mind? I'm glad you asked. Because the only proof that we have mind is that we can think. Sometimes we forget that, but we can think. <laughs> and we have to remember, you can think, you can think. You can think, you can use this wonderful mind that you have. Actually, there's no such thing as your mind and my mind, God's mind or his mind or her mind, it's all God's mind. My mind and your mind and the mind of God are one. When we understand that, this is our calling then to awaken to this because when we get this and comprehend this, we understand the infinite wisdom and knowledge is ours to tap into. We understand this, we can establish and declare a spiritual oneness that transforms our life and how we live, that really brings about a different effect. We then create a cause in mind, holding a thought in mind, that brings about a different result. And how amazing that is. So there is really just mind in which we live and move and have our being. Wait a minute, where do we get that from? Ah, how about the scripture that offers us this wonderful truth in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28. For in God, and God being this infinite mind, God being this infinite intelligence, God bring, being the wisdom of the ages, God being that which is the infinite knowledge of the universe. For in God, we live and move and we have our being. As some of our own poets have said, we are God's offspring. Wow, God's offspring. We understand this, then we also embrace this wonderful passage from Philippians chapter two, verse five. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Wow, we think about this, that, wow, we could awaken then to the one mind, our mind being so one, with the divine mind, that what we then begin to think about is creating something amazing for our lives. We begin to understand who's in control. It's our thoughts, the mind, as we begin to shape our world through thinking in new ways and changing our thoughts. And this mind can return to us only what we think into it. So it's interesting, you know, the scripture says, cast your bread upon the waters and after many days it will return unto you. In our metaphysical understanding of scripture, when we look to break down texts, we find the ancient writers referring to that bread as a beautiful symbol and metaphor for us of the bread of understanding. You know, that's what nurtures us. Truth, understanding, wisdom, right? It nurtures the soul, it strengthens the soul. When we engage in the journey of seeking wisdom, getting clarity, getting greater understanding, we're just eating of the bread of new understanding. We're nurturing the soul. We're feeding the soul with this infinite knowledge that's available to us. So when we cast our thoughts, our, our bread, our understanding upon the waters, waters being consciousness, being that metaphor for thought within us, cast that understanding into your thoughts and it's gonna come back to you. For the mind can only return to us what we think into it. So what are you casting out? Because that's what it's gonna come back to you. This beautiful passage of scripture is saying that what you think about is gonna manifest in your life in unique and special ways. Thoughts held in mind produce in like kind. That's a catchphrase that we've heard over and over again in our classes and about key thought, but how important it is to embrace this because it's going to return to you exactly what you've been holding in thought. You hold thought, you hold in mind, hate, 
anger, unforgiveness, it's going to return that to you. You hold in mind love, grace, peace, joy, happiness. It's going to return that to you because that's what you're putting out. You're casting out upon the waters and the waters is bringing it right back to you in this wonderful cycle of blessing. Jesus said, it is done unto you as you have believed. It is done. Wow. It's done. It's returned unto you. It's brought to you. That which you believe, that which you spoke, that which you've held in mind is now coming back to you. You see, thoughts are these wonderful seeds that we plant. And when we plant these seeds in a garden, we know that whatever we planted will produce in like kind, right? I don't know about you, but I've never been able to plant tomato seeds and get roses. I'm always going to get tomatoes, right? So when we understand this, we understand that the thoughts held in mind are now producing, manifesting, bringing back to you. That which you're casting out, putting out, holding in thought is now coming back to you. It's, it's creating the harvest and it will be done unto you. That's right. It's done unto you. So it brings such a beautiful peace to our lives. This is the wonderful comforting aspect of this divine passage of ancient wisdom. It's done unto us so we don't worry. We can be simply at perfect peace and enjoy the experience because the thought we're holding in, holding in mind about the experience you're going through is going to produce in like kind. If the thought is the seed you're planting in your garden and it's going to produce exactly the seed that you planted and that you placed there. It is a creative force. Creation is going on all the time. We love this. And we should realize that and learn how to control it so that we might create for us the things that we desire, not the things that we don't want. So we have to be very cautious. What are we creating? What are thoughts creating? How are we shaping the world that we're living in through the thoughts that we're holding in mind? What have you been thinking about lately? What's been occupying your thoughts? Fear, doubt, stress, worry. It's going to manifest within your life. Is that what you choose to create? Oh, you say, I don't want to create any more of that. So then let's change our thinking. Let's embrace the new way of thinking, a new thought. Let's embrace a way to say, I'm going to control my thoughts. And I'm going to begin to think in a new way because I know that what I cast out comes right back to me. So I'm going to cast out love, perfect peace, health and wholeness, grace, compassion, joy, happiness. I'm going to cast it out. I'm going to speak it out in all ways. I'm going to begin to demonstrate. I'm going to be, that's what I'm putting out to the world around me, knowing that it's going to come back to me in wonderful ways. So we've got to learn how to control our thoughts. And you may say, what, what, how? How do we control our thoughts? Proverbs 4, verse 7 shares with this. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Get wisdom, though it costs all that you have. Get understanding is the consciousness that we're called to live in and embrace. Because what happens is this enables us to control our thoughts. You see, the more we take in of the good, filling ourselves with the mind, our mind with the thoughts of good, the thoughts of truth, understanding the very bread that nurtures our soul, shall we say, the understanding, the wisdom of the divine, the more we bring it into our lives and fill our lives with it, well, there's no room for anything other than the all good. We fill our thoughts with the right attitude. And what happens is every time we do this, we change perspectives. We change our outlook completely when we do this. What we're doing is we're filling our lives to overflowing. I'm talking, let's fill it up, fill it up, fill it up with wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Because in the realms of ignorance, what happens is that ignorance, lack of understanding, lack of knowing, we're led astray so quickly by any little thing that comes by. Any thought, any trend, 
any word of gossip, any word of rumor, any old kind of which we just carried away by it. But wisdom is the anchor that says, wait a minute, I know this to be true. I held on and that truth anchors me as a solid rock, on a solid rock. It enables me then to not drift off into tangents. What happens is that when we are filled up so full, there is no room than for the negative. So fill our lives, get wisdom, seek, learn, study. You know, right now we've got a perfect opportunity for us to engage in spiritual enrichment. Find a class to be part of. Learn to enrich your life with the free time that you have since there's not a lot of distractions to take us away that we could instead take this time to enrich the soul, enrich the spirit. I invite you to join us for one of our spiritual enrichment classes because this is a great way to get wisdom that fills you up. And if there's any thought of weakness that should come to our life, what we have to ask, wait a minute, weakness. Saying like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it's able. Uh, my thoughts are all full of doubt and fear. If there's weakness, we have to say, is life weak? Wait, is God weak? Is God weak? No. The universe with all of its creative power, is it weak? No. If not, then you're not weak either. So stop using excuses to say, you know what, I'm too weak to control my thoughts. I, it's not possible. I can't manifest, I can't create my reality. I can't really accept the responsibility of being in control. Oh. That's the key, accepting responsibility for the life that we live and the world that we live in, that we're creating a world that works for everyone, not just a few, by accepting the responsibility that says, I will think, I will control my thoughts, my mind will be filled with that which is pure and good, that which will demonstrate to the world around me the highest and best. So I let go of all excuses because I know that God within me will enable me to think the highest and best, that God within me is my strength and my power that enables me to just create the very best world I can. For I claim I can do all things through Christ, this Christ consciousness, this awareness, this understanding. And that's what strengthens us. That which girds us up and lifts us up, enables us to be strong. I can do all things through it. Nothing can hinder things from coming to the person who knows that they're dealing with the same power that creates all from itself. You're dealing with the same power that moves all within itself. And you're dealing with the same power that holds all things in place. Wow. If we're to succeed, we never let our mind dwell then on past mistakes. Another key to how to control that mind and that thought to always being focused on your highest and best. Don't dwell on your past mistakes. Don't allow them to be that which shapes your todays and your outcome. Today is a fresh start. You have the opportunity to set aside all those thoughts, all those past memories, all those yesterdays, all those experiences, the error thinking or the mistakes you may have made, set them aside. Don't let them be the building blocks for today's experience. Build your today on fresh new thoughts, fresh new ways of thinking. Because let me tell you this, we are all immersed, that's right, immersed in an atmosphere of our own thinking. We're immersed in an atmosphere of our own thinking. You know, like our planet has an atmosphere around it and we are immersed in this atmosphere. And yet sometimes this atmosphere gets a little polluted. We have pollution going out into the atmosphere. So many people are concerned about that and we look to change, making changes within our environment because our atmosphere of our world is polluted. Well, how about this? So too in our life, we're immersed in this spiritual atmosphere of thought and it can get polluted. It can get polluted. This atmosphere is the direct result of all that we have thought or that we have said, all that we have thought or done and it decides what is to take place in our life? We're living in this atmosphere of the collective thoughts of our thinking of what we've been thinking. 
And sometimes we've been thinking a little selfishly. Sometimes we entertain thoughts that are a little just me, 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 and not about anyone else. Sometimes we think about things that are just from the perspective of, I don't want to be inconvenienced. I don't want to be put out. I don't want to do this. And we kind of pollute the atmosphere with thoughts that are just very self-focused, don't we? So what's key is that we want to do is uh, decide what's to take place in our life. And when we do, we change the atmosphere because it's going to attract what you've been thinking. It's going to attract what your thoughts are like. And it's going to repel anything that's unlike the thoughts that you have in your life. So let's clean up the atmosphere. Let's take control of our thoughts and ask ourselves what we are thinking on a day-to-day -day basis. Think this thing clearly and allow that clarity to then say, this is the life I want to create. I want to create a world that's full of joy and peace and happiness. So I refuse. I uh, let go, I release any kind of thought that is contrary to it in any shape or form. <clears throat> There's a beautiful story within the Bible in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. It tells of the king of Israel that when he was looking out to an advancing army coming up to a host of the enemy charging in. There's this beautiful passage in the scripture, and this is his quote, we have no might against this great company, but our eyes are upon God. So what this whole passage and story unfolds of us, we may look at the physical world around us that may want to pollute our atmosphere of our thoughts with all kinds of said, of impossibilities, challenges, difficulties, things that may say, you know, it's never going to happen for me. It's not going to work out for me. And our atmosphere gets so polluted with that kind of thought. But here the king of Israel is saying, we don't have a lot of might, a lot of strong army, a lot of military force. But, and I see the enemy advancing, but my eyes are upon God. And I am now reflecting a, a lifestyle that is filled with success and the power of overcoming. My thoughts are focused on seeing the highest and best in the midst of every single challenge. That's where my thoughts go. Highest and best, highest and best. I'm always going there with my thinking versus worst case scenario. You know, it's so easy for us to fall in that trap. People will always say, well, what's the worst case scenario? What's the worst thing that can happen? And let's begin to think about the worst. Wait a minute. Why don't we always begin with what's the best thing that can happen? What's the highest and best that could happen for you today? What's the greatest thing that could unfold for you? What? Blessing? Healing? Prosperity? Success? Love? What's the greatest thing that you desire within your life? What's the highest and best? Begin to put your eyes, your spiritual eyes, that upon the divine and allow thoughts to go there. That type of focused thinking is the kind that really says, I'm in control. So, hey, who's in control? You are. That's right. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, To those who received him, talking about receiving the very teaching of Jesus, because what are we receiving? We're not receiving Jesus the man. We're receiving the very words and teaching, the power of truth and life of the words that he expressed to giving us as the being the divine example. To those who have received, receive the very teaching of Jesus, who welcome this Christ awareness, this Christ consciousness, to them he gave power, power to become sons of God. That's to each and every one of us who embrace the very teaching of Jesus, who embrace the very teaching of a powerful journey of day-to-day -day renewing our mind, being in control, taking responsibility for the journey of our life. Well, to each and every one of us, there has been given power. You have the power that says you are in control. It's ignited when you understand that you are the one with the very access to infinite intelligence. You're the one who has the access to the wisdom of the ages. You're the one who has the access to the insight of God. You have the power to become, to become a son of God. Wow, a child of God, an heir to all. 
You have that power right here and now. That means that you have the power to shape a day that is full of blessing, full of joy, full of happiness. The power is the power of thought. It's given to you. And this power gives you control over the shaping each and every moment of your life. You know, some people want to say, in times of challenge and trial and tribulation, Jesus, take the wheel. We want to say, Jesus, take the wheel. We want to say, someone else be in control. Someone else do it for me. I'm, I'm giving up the driving. You know, Jesus, take the wheel. Uh, I've given up. Jesus, you take over. That's giving up your responsibility, your God-given power. You were given a power. Scripture says it's you who've been given the power. It's your consciousness. And it's time to say, consciousness, take the wheel. In fact, let's not just stop with the wheel. Let's just say, consciousness, take the whole car. Let's go all the way with it. Not just the wheel. Take the car. Take every aspect. Here it is. Let the consciousness, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Let it be in you right here, right now. That very same way of thinking that was affirmative and positive, that believed in the power of blessing, that believed in the miraculous, that believed all things are possible, that power is yours. And in that power, you become that child of God that you're called to be. So today's question is, hey, who's in control here? And the answer is, you are. You're in control as you allow the consciousness, the mind, the infinite wisdom of God to shape your reality. Today's your day of infinite blessing. Today's your day to experience the all good. It's all yours. As we begin to think from that perspective, as we begin to take control of our thoughts, as we begin to welcome the experience of each and day waking up and saying, thank God I'm alive. Thank God for the power and presence within me. Thank God for the opportunity to experience my highest and best because that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Amen. Amen. Yes.